So I know that y'all sick of these Edge videos, but we really gotta figure out who Edge number one is. And I'm constantly making these videos because I think that this conversation, Edge in particular, is the most polarizing in our community. Kind of break these guys down as I use the Mario Kart example. I use many Mario Kart examples. How there's a speed guy, there's a power guy, then there's the balance dude. And there's no right or wrong answer. It, it just depends on what you're looking for and how you use that character or that player. You see what I'm saying? Um, and in this particular situation, there's the you know mostly run guy then there's the pass rush you do then you got the balance guy you can find videos of all these gentlemen on my channel of course uh but we got to figure out uh jalen phillips who i think is in clear contention uh for edge one he's like edge one c right now for me we'll just figure that out later on but um you know when we do these film sessions i like to open up with a play to kind of summarize the guy and how i feel about him and this was kind of like my favorite play from jalen phillips here he's on the right side wearing greg russo's number very hilarious um, same school and all that but uh, this is the play that kind of summarizes my guy man um, I think he gives you nuance as a pass rusher in terms of his technique now is he like the most physically gifted pass rusher in this class I wouldn't say that but I think he takes his physical gifts and his technique and he kind of puts it together well take a look at him here he's going to give us a little outside rush and you know I'm a sucker for anybody that's rushing the outside and they attack the outside hand that means you're doing it right he's going to bend flatten get to the quarterback we got big money let's keep watching what I like about Jalen as a pass rusher is I've seen him win in multiple ways, right? Like I've seen him winning to the outside, hand manipulation, uh, wrist control. I've seen him use quickness to the inside. I've seen him bull rush, hands down the middle. So I think he's a guy that does rush with a plan. Like I said earlier, he's not the most physically gifted, um, but if you can get the results that you're looking for, then fine. Like this game versus Virginia Tech is, is, is such a beauty to watch. Like he starts beating up on the kids, honestly. And to be fair, like they start to, you know, bring extra help in. They start getting the guard help, the running back tight end, just to kind of slow him down a little bit to where Quincy Roche on the other side, he's just kind of one-on-one -on -one with Darisaw. And trust me, Quincy Roche made me very sleepy in this film. Uh, but it's like the more, you know, the, the more film that you watch, the more you see that, that Jalen Phillips is in control of his own play. He's not stumbling in the sacks. He's not just, you know, I, I just happen to be lined up against the worst guard I've, I've ever seen. I got four sacks in the game. It's like, even when he's not getting sacks, when he's getting pressure, he's impressing me. And here's an example of Jalen Phillips getting pressure, not getting a sack, but still impressing me. So earlier we talked about Jalen Phillips winning in multiple ways. The first time it was more so of an outside rush defeating that hand. Uh, the second play that we saw, it was more so uh, quickness to the inside here. Let's just take a look at how Jalen Phillips win this rep and then we'll just come back and we'll have a little conversation about it. Good little pressure. Every, every play ain't gotta be a sack. There are some play, I'm not even gonna say dude's name, but he could get a sack, that player. He could get a sack and I cannot be impressed. Or Jalen Phillips can get this pressure and I can break down all the things that he did right to earn the actual pressure. Let's just uh, take a look at him. First, we're gonna get a step with his right foot there. We're gonna get that right here. Uh, just to fill your brain with the information that I could possibly beat you back inside. And I'm not gonna show it here because I want y'all to do your own research, but he did uh, get some pressure inside earlier in this game. So I'm just giving you this foot just to you know just to keep you nervous at the idea that i could go back inside um we're gonna get outside here and what i really like about this is the arm bend now if Jalen stayed extended i mean it'll be fine if he stayed extended i mean that'll that'll just be separation but the fact that we have some bend in the elbow then we're gonna extend it gives us a lot more room to work with and navigate there so i've already bench press you off of me now all i gotta do is defeat your outside hand in which Jalen does here I hate that the quarterback got to get rid of the ball here because this this really could have been a uh, been a good play for uh, Jalen Phillips. Could have been another sack in the log there. Um, it just kind of is what it is, though, man. But I like his combination of technique and athleticism that he does have. And his arm length. I don't want to forget about his arm length. Let's take a look at this play. Jalen Phillips on, on the left side of your screen that I'll just talk about a couple little elements that I really um, I really just, you know, liked about him. Um, we see a little uh, glimpse of a motor here. Not nothing too, 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 too crazy, but you know, he didn't he didn't slow down not one time. And I keep comparing him to, you know, to old buddy, but I know Jalen Phillips can turn. I know that if Jalen Phillips got a you know, put his foot in the ground and change direction. I know that he can do it. Uh, plus, anytime you get a sack on Trevor Lawrence is always something to look at, you know? 
I ain't really got to break this down. I just wanted to show this sack because this is just D-line porn. So, um, you know, quick defeat of the outside hand, get the sack. I just wanted to show it. That's all. Moving on. So we talked about balance, right? Like he's not super elite as a run defender, but he does make plays in the run game, you know, sometimes. You know, I just need him to be a little more consistent in the run game. And this will probably go in one of his cons or whatever, consistency, right? Um, not to say that it's a super big problem, like he's a liability in the run game or anything like that, but uh, I just think that he has room to grow in it. Uh, take a look at him here. We're going to see him line up against this uh, this uh, right tackle here, get a good little punch. And this is a really good example of power to – you know, power to quickness um, versus the run here. We're going to get a good little punch, extend, find the football. So this kind of gives me a little bit of evidence that if you want to use him as a two gapper. Now, I wouldn't do it. I feel like if you're in a uh, if you're a defense that's running odd fronts, then just make him outside linebacker and just move on with your life. There's actually Miami film of him dropping back in coverage. I hate it. Uh, but if he got a two gap a couple of times a game, I'd imagine he could do it because he's powerful enough and he's long enough. Um, so we're going to see him get, get some extension there, get his eyes back inside and actually make the play on the run. So let's just give you an example, um, a quick example of inconsistency that I just noticed just watching the uh, watching his play versus the run. Take a look at Jalen right here. Um, he does the right thing here. I always say that when somebody's not blocking you, like we looking right at you, we're doing something with you, whether we're reading you or somebody's pulling to hit you in the side of your face. Um, you know, you need to do the right things to not become a victim here. Right. So Jalen does the right thing in this play, right. To where if the right tackle is going to block down from you, do what we call squeeze, right. Cut down space. Don't just run upfield and leave C gap wide the hell open. I need you to get to this right tackles hip as quickly as you can. If there's a puller, whether it be a fullback, a tight end or a guard coming to hit you, you need to hit him, meet him in the gap right here to kind of constrict this gap here. So you see how much space this would be if Jalen Phillips doesn't squeeze. And then once he squeezes, take a look at how much space that he that he cut down from the running back. So he definitely did a uh, did a good job squeezing here. And one of his Miami defenders uh, made the play. Great job, Jalen Phillips. And this is a time where he wasn't so patient with blocking down and he became a victim and we got a big run from this, right? Let me just bring it back one more time so y'all can see what we got going on. Jalen Phillips on the left side of the screen here. Uh, the right tackle is going to block down or just block away from Jalen Phillips. Somebody's going to pull. Jalen's going to go up field really eager to make that play. And this, you know, you know, this is Jalen getting hit in the side of the face here. It's just going to open up this gap and now we got a big run lane here. So... I encourage everybody to do their own research. I'm not your financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. If you watch the Virginia Tech film, he was really good versus the counter in that game. But in this North Carolina film, he was very impatient. And every time they ran the um, the uh, counter at him, he just kind of ran upfield. And uh, they had big big run lanes. I would say that a lot of North, North Carolina's big runs came on Jalen Phillips' side when he was just kind of running upfield and not looking for the, you know, for the uh, pull and crack or whatever. So um, just keep eyes on that when you're doing your own research. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got for y'all today, man. Um, if you're watching film, I mean, if you're here for the film only, then you can leave right now. I appreciate y'all following me on Twitter. Uh, this video was up on my Patreon a little bit ago, like a couple of weeks ago, I believe. So if you want to see videos early, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. Um, I got like 60 films over there. Um, I know I only got like 15 on YouTube or whatever, but I, I, I can't put everything on YouTube or whatever. So we're not going to put the big business out over here over here um but if you want to stay for the conversation that you know that i'm going to have about Jalen phillips or whatever how he fits or whatever you can hang around and uh you know we'll just have that conversation i really like Jalen phillips i'm a i'm a big fan of him um i know that when it when it comes to edge right now it's like basically 1a 1b 1c and um, i would love to know what y'all think you know uh like who's the who's the best d end or whatever y'all can go in the uh, chat box and let me know everybody has what they're good at but everybody kind of got their faults as well so in my mind you're not going to figure out who's going to be the best edge in this class until they get to pros because there's this one variable that we always account for when we talk about pro players is you know 
do they keep working when they get to the league? And that's really what's going to be the uh, variable there. I really like Quiddy Pay because I think he's a robot. And in my mind, if if he's so coachable in the run game, he could be coachable in the in the pass game, right? So I could lean Quiddy Pay there. But I love Ojolari as a pure pass rusher to where, hey, man, Ojolari got the tools to be a good run defender. He just kind of got to be taught to be a little more patient in the run defending game. And then you'll have, you know, a better Ojolari. And the same thing with uh with uh Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips kind of got the build you want and the versatility, you know. I don't see Quiddy Pay being a stand-up outside linebacker. Ojolari may not be a hand in the dirt guy. I can see Jalen Phillips doing both those things. Um Jalen Phillips is pretty good versus the run, could be more consistent. He's pretty good versus the pass, could be more consistent, you know. Uh he ha- he definitely has his his uh his good pass rush plays. He got to the quarterback 10 times in his last seven games or whatever. And that's a stat that I been throwing around for uh for a good little bit some I'm, I'm a super fan of Jalen Phillips. Um you know it's it's just it's just can you put it all together and I think that's what the that's what the big conversation is gonna be putting it all together who can improve what you're gonna be like when you get in your man body because the NFL has that peanut butter that you just kind of eat you live waste one time and all of a sudden in the offseason you just bigger than what you once was you know um we just gotta see what happens man moving forward but uh you know, since we're talking about Miami, I feel like somebody's gonna ask me about uh, Quincy Roche, the 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 uh, number two guy, or or just he's he's number two, but he's also the second edge guy on this team or whatever. Uh, how do I like Roche? I'm not really a big fan of Roche, so I'm not even gonna put him over there. Do I like Roche better, than Russo? Yes. Um, but you can just take that with whatever grain of salt that you want to take it with. But when it comes to um, Jalen Phillips, in my mind, he's a he's a he's a first round pick somewhere i think all these guys are first round picks somewhere and we really gonna have to wait on the draft because what i can see is either one of these guys can go in the early teens but the third guy could go as late as 30 something i can see quitty pay fall into 30 something ojalari um uh phillips all those guys could end up in the late 20s 30s maybe but I can also see either one of those dudes going early teens, which is why it's really important to get those second round picks because a lot of these dudes are in the same tier anyway. So um, I know I've, I've I've said Buddy's name a few times too many in this film session. I'm not going to say it no more. But um, I think at some point the media scouts got to catch up. And I don't even know if it's just them catching up. Maybe they know a little better because they've been watching the film. You know what I'm saying? They, they've they got to watch the film and see the same things that we're seeing. Maybe it's just a draft Illuminati thing that they're just trying to push somebody. You know, maybe it's just the hype thing, you know, or just they, they can't say that they're wrong about somebody. They can have a super big projection early. Like with the uh, with the Sean Wade thing, like we're projecting Sean Sean Wade and no matter no matter how bad the film is no matter no matter how bad the underground community is talking about it we're not going to change our mind because um we've made our mind up already we're moving on to other thoughts and opinions and that'll be unfortunate if that's the case but now that's all I got for the conversation of Jalen Phillips the rest of y'all man follow me on Twitter V-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I like I said subscribe to the Patreon plenty more film over there and for the, hey man y'all, y'all hold it down for, for the Doski Wolski Peace and Whiskey man I appreciate y'all being here um, more film coming soon and the word soon is you know relative to what you think soon is but <laughs> there will be more film appreciate y'all man check out my outro peace